Good evening, Nigerians and well-wishers of Nigeria, those who love Nigeria and who want Nigeria to be alive again. We're back here again at this corner, and we're hoping to have a wonderful discussion in this um, second day of November. I don't know where you are joining us from. If you're in your tomorrow, well, I hope you're having a good day ahead of us. If you're behind us, we all are doing good. This night, we're going to be dealing with real national issues. Our nation is crumbling within months under the current APC leadership. APC handed over to APC. APC that is currently in power is blaming the APC that left power, that they destroyed the economy. The APC that took over now is the APC that made the former at APC, the, our leaders. Now, it's obvious that they are open. They want, they want to pick the brain of P2B. They want the person of P2B. They want the ideas of P2B. But before then, we're going to be seeing, we're going to be analyzing together with other analysts the grave situation that Nigeria has found itself. Of course, it is no longer news how insensitive these people are, how they are interested in benefiting themselves, making their lives more comfortable, buying themselves luxurious yachts, and rebuilding even houses they may not use for one day until they leave power, just so contracts can be awarded and those who help them to steal our election can get their cut of the contract all those things. And they are doing it despite the fact that Nigeria is grinding to a halt. Yesterday, we played for us videos of some of our federal roads where people move goods and services. And you are going to hear where the same people that ran down and still running down Nigeria is telling us why they should take our money to buy the best of vehicle because the road they ran down is bad. So we're going to be doing a side-by-side -side analysis tonight, and I hope that um, you will appreciate our discussion today. So let's start with this whole billions, 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 they are ballooning, buying themselves, yash, and what have you, okay? Thank you. Yeah, Doc, thank you very much. Uh, before we get to start watching the video, I just want to say that the problem we have in Nigeria is the problem of leadership. And when it comes to leadership, the worst aspect is that we have leaders who are not sensitive, you know? They don't really care about what the masses are going through. And it's becoming clearer to Nigerians. People are getting to understand all this. During the election, they refuse to come for debate to tell Nigerians what they'll be doing for them. And we can see it now that they don't even have clue as to arrest the situations this country has found itself. Instead, they are just working for their own self. So we, we are going to be analyzing this video. We want you to go along with us and see how our leaders have gone on a, a rampage of spending, spending without considering the people. It was just yesterday that some people were protesting in one of the states that they are hungry, that they can't even afford fish. They now said fish is gold. You can imagine what people are going through, but our leaders don't care. So let's just analyze this video. We, we've got a lot to talk tonight, and we urge you to join us. Tinubu's presidential yacht, luxury in penury. One, 133 million Nigerians leaving multidimensional poverty. 20 million Nigerian children of school age are unable to attend school due to poverty, while 37% of Nigeria's children are malnourished, exposing them to retarded development. Two, Inflation in Nigeria is at 
all time high of 26.72%. The country's total debt. stands at 87 trillion naira and its debt service to revenue ratio is a whooping 73.5% since removal of full subsidy and plummeting naira value most nigerians go to bed bed hungry businesses are closing down while job loss is on the increase for amidst this harsh economy, pains and penury, Nigeria's president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, wants to procure a presidential luxury yacht. Five, can someone justify this for me again, please? A lot of questions. Then let me take up who wrote, and this is something that I want to discuss. The USA used to have a presidential yacht called USS Sequoia. The Sequoia is a yacht that served eight US presidents the last being Herbert Hoover. Jimmy Carter became president when the USA economy had just exited a recession and was battling inflation and unemployment. Jimmy Carter, setting a cost-cutting example, ordered the presidential yacht sold in 1977. Till date, the USA $33 trillion economy does not have a presidential yacht. Nigeria is in the same situation as USA in 1977. Rather than cut costs, our public office holders have gone on a spending spree with reckless abandon, as though it's out of fashion. You ask Nigerians to endure pain, but what pain are you enduring? Whether it will be funded or not, why is a presidential yacht in the supplementary budget? Why the rush? I'd like to come to you, Ayo, on this story, but I also want to say that, like I said earlier, this has always elicited public outcry. Yeah. Back in 2016, former President Buhari had said he was going to sell two, two. presidential okay. jets yeah. out of 10. Yeah. We don't know if that has happened. I mean, but this is the point that I want yeah. to make. Okay, so I'm really glad that you read up well, Lua's tweet, because yes. that was where I was going to come up from, from the U.S. and the Sequoia. There are many countries that actually have a presidential yacht. Mm -hmm. And let me put it out there. Because it's under the Navy does not mean it is meant for combat or meant for um, um, security. It is actually, in fact, in the U.S., it used to be called the floating, um, um, floating White House and was given to the president and, and high-ranking officials in government to get away from public life, you know, a little, little luxury. So that even though it comes under the Navy's purview. So let's not get deceived by, oh, it's under the Navy's budget. It is still what is supposed to be a yacht. It's not meant to go to battle. It's not a weapon of warfare. It is not going to be used by the Navy. It's going to be used by the president just in the way that, that we have the presidential fleet. So let me just put that out there. The other countries like Egypt, Finland, India, Italy, Philippines, Russia, and the likes that have a yacht, a presidential yacht and it is for their presidents to enjoy. So there's nothing, so let's put that to rest. Going back to Warriors tweet that, oh, it's for the Navy ETC. Let's not put propaganda on this one. Yes. It's under the Navy's purview, but it's going to be for the president's use and leisure. And then it goes back to comparisons. Yes. Five billion naira. Oji, it sounds outrageous especially under the current economic reality. And then in the same, under the, at the same meeting, they put five billion naira for education. And this is the same president at the retreat that. yesterday who had prior, talked about the importance of education, especially as a tool to tackling poverty. And he talked about the fact that this administration was going to pay very close attention to education. Of course, tertiary education was Student loan is just a small fraction of their allocation to education, but it just smirks of it. It is it. It almost is ludicrous. What's the money going to go to um, the po po to poverty alleviation? Yes, they've talked about um, 15 million households, 25,000 naira per month, and people are saying it's not enough. We have the presidential fleet. Why not sell off some of those um, some of the um, flights? Don't forget that a few days ago, just on this show, we're talking about the president's son taking one of the presidential 
show fleet, um, a pri private jet, to a, a, for a private visit a, for a, a polo match in one of the northern countries. We have that on ground. Abuse of power, mm -hmm. abuse of um, money, especially your allocation, especially at this time when we are all told to tighten yes, our belts. Here's what Nigerians would like to hear from this government. A demonstration of the fact that they feel the pulse of the people. And this is done by setting Even if it's a public show to identify with the poorest of the poor in Nigeria, cut all these extra expenses. Why? Okay. Why are we buying yeah. new cars for the first lady's office? Why she had other cars? These people are not poor people. So, in the interest of Nigerians. Can they do something altruistic? Can yes. they reject some of these things that even... Okay. Um, can I yeah, come no, in? I think we can... Uh, yeah, let's take it from yeah. this point. I just yes. wanted to say that she said these people are not poor people. We've once heard the president's wife telling us that they are, they are well-to-do. They are not coming into governance because of money. But you can imagine... A whole lot has been allocated to fixing his house in Aguda, you know? And then with all the presidential uh, houses that they'll be living in, all that. You can imagine them giving $5 billion to education and $5 billion to buying yachts, meaning that yachts now is equivalent to education. That's how their calculation is. They keep telling us in the mouth that they are going to pay attention to education, but their action says otherwise. Doc, please come in at this point. The amount allocated for education of Nigeria, of Nigerian children, which will capture the lecturers, the teaching, the quality of education and everything, is 30% of the amount allocated to buy car for the office of the first lady that is not in our constitution. Akbabio is trying to set up the office of the first lady of the Senate. These things are not in the constitution. These offices are not in the constitution. So an office that is not even in our constitution is greater 30% of, because they are saying, talking about 1.5 um, billion, isn't it? And education is, um, I'm sorry, um, um, how many billion again was for the, for the, um, for the wife of the president? I think it's 1.5 billion for her cars. Yes. yes, for her cars. So our whole education budget is 30 percent of that amount our whole education budget now the luxury yacht which as this lady said has nothing to do with going to war it's not a gunboat it's not something they can use to protect our pipelines that is the hen that is laying the, laying the golden egg it's just for the president to go and stretch and enjoy himself in the high seas is equal to what is allocated to the education. I mean, you know, when I was thinking about this thing today, I told myself, is it not when people vote them to power, they will think about the people who vote them. They know that nobody voted them to power. They know that they took it they held on to it, they snatched it, they held on to it, and they ran with it. So what they are doing is exactly what happens when you conquer a territory. What do you do? You plunder them. Nigeria is a conquered territory to these politicians, and they are plundering us. And that is it. That's what they are doing. So Nigerians, we need to understand that there is no empathy because a, a man who conquered a territory don't show empathy. You conquer so you can plunder them. So Nigeria has been conquered and we are now being plundered. It's a shame, 
all right? But like the lady said, these people, okay, look at it. We have as much as 10 presidential jets. Doing what? It's because it is available. That is why the son of the president can afford to say, hey, I want to go and watch a polo match in Kano. And the security officers will all pack. The guy is flying to go and do a, watch a polo match. What an abuse of office. Do you know how much aviation fuel that will be burned for the son of the president to go and watch a polo? What of his own father's private jet? Why not use it? And Nigerians are begging for 35,000 Naira a month. 35,000 Naira is in the bracket of about $30. So Nigerian federal worker is worth $1 a day. $1 a day. And the president's wife's cars is worth over $7 billion. Now, think about it. Does it really make sense? And like the lady was saying, Ayo was saying, even if you want to fake it, why can't you just fake it to Nigerians and make them, make, make them feel like you care? They're not even faking it. They're throwing it in our face and saying, I don't care because we're conquered territory. There is something the other guy in that studio said that I want us to listen to. If, you can, if the video can play again, I pray. It does. Come with the, yes. the paraphernalia of their office yes. to show Nigerians that we are. Yes, let us keep going. Yes. We are in this together. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking, you're not just talking, but you're walking yeah. the talk as well. Yeah. Very. Important, but wrong signals. I hope it is totally squashed, not just. Before it gets to the to the house, but even at the FEC, it ought to have. Been totally done away with. I think it's an insult um, to, for Nigerians Absolutely. to see this kind I love, of thing. I love your points, Ayo, and you know, you just hit the nail on the head. One point five billion naira for the office of the first lady. Cars for the office of the first lady. People are also asking, are these new costs reflecting the new FX rate? I mean, the, the price could be higher, wouldn't it? Of course, by yeah. the time you look at the price of a uh, dollar now, yes. definitely it will go up. Yes. But I was going to respond to what Ruben was saying that the Senate or the National Assembly should uh, reject it. Which National Assembly <laughs> are we talking about? Please, let's get realistic about the state of this country. In a situation where the National Assembly itself is looking for how many billions to buy their own SUVs, which a member of the Senate is saying we need it because of the bad road, which we have superintended and failed to make sure that those roads we carry out our constituency duties and, and uh, you know the site duties they did not carry that out they did not make sure that the roads are good but instead of making sure that the roads are good they are focused completely on don't worry about the road we will buy vehicles that can survive on those roads it's completely unacceptable and it runs from the top to the bottom of our leadership all right okay in I this country and that is what we've got to focus on if the president i am happy that with this video was able to play up to this point two things i wanted to pick out of here meanwhile i think i've been making i don't know what did i say did i say that the president the wife of the president's car budget is 30% or education is 30%. I think I'm mixing it. Yeah. It's supposed to be the amount of money allocated to buy cars for the president's wife is 30% of what is allocated for the whole education because the whole education is 5 billion and the woman's allocation is 1.5 billion. So for every one, uh, how do you put it? Okay, simply put, 30% of our education budget 
is what one woman is using to drive on the streets of Nigeria. That is it. And this is someone, okay, let's, let's not even go there. Secondly, you have heard him talking here, which, which Senate, which National Assembly will reject this allocation? When they themselves are trying to buy a car for each person in the Senate, 160 million. And in the, in the House of Red, 140 million a car. But you know what? If the, if the mainstream media in Nigeria will begin to come, we continue with this kind of critical analysis of governmental behavior, things will change. Because until now, it is then say, then say, I like as they are here, at least based on this kind of their critical perspective, the lady, uh, the two ladies, Oji, um, 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 uh, Ayo, and this man, I don't know his name. Of course, uh, our, our not here, not there, um, uh, uh, Abati will try to, because as I, I've said, I think he wants to get in the government too, so he has to, he's being careful, too careful, all right? So, but if the press continues like this, and I think we are putting them under pressure because we are hammering it and we are not mainstream. And people are deviating, moving away from them to listen to us. Look at TVC. Just go and look at TVC on YouTube, the number of viewership they get. They are tanking. That's to tell you that people know that they are there as an extension of not just the political party called APC, but the president, because the president owns TVC and owns the nation newspaper. So nobody cares about them. Now, in line with what this man is saying, there was that video where the man who is in charge of services in, in, in the Senate was trying to defend 160 million naira worth of a car. Can we play it? I know we've seen it before, but let's play it because of um, how it connects with this. We spend 140 million. If I give you 140 million naira cash to take it to your central district, won't your people benefit from it? Let, let me tell you, I don't want to go personal now. I don't want to go personal. Those, that same vehicle that you're talking about, before coming to the National Assembly, I have a vehicle that I have. You got that? But this is Nigerian money. Yeah, so. And Nigeria does not have money at the moment. So 26 point something uh, uh, inflation rate with over 34 percent of Nigerians so unemployed. Are we supposed with to over 134 million Nigerians multidimensionally poor? Is it sensitive that those who are supposed to represent the people go to Abuja and lavish themselves with luxury vehicle? Is that sensitive, Senator? Are we supposed to do our oversight? Function tracking or going without uh, vehicles? Maybe you could have, cons I mean, considered a, a, a more cheaper vehicles no, to no, get the job no, done. Maybe, maybe, maybe a car. Maybe, uh, maybe a sedan. If I travel to maybe okay. a twenty-five million naira worth of sedan if vehicle, I, you, might do the job. If I travel to my constituency with a car now, by the time I go three, four times, you know Nigerian roads. Is that not an indictment on you, those of you who are in power? That what? Those of you who are leaders in Nigeria today, is that not an indictment? Uh, and we have bad roads in the states, in your local government, in the senatorial district. Is that not an indictment that on not, those of you who are in power? It's, it's a discussion for another day. <laughs> you see the level of... Uh, but like Nigerians suffer for the inefficiency of those who are in power, let me tell Senator? You, if you look at Nigerian roads all over the federation, that... We have a serious problem because nothing much has been done in the last few years. That's possible. Most of our roads, they are terribly bad. In fact, this, this man said, "Not our. We have a serious problem with our roads because nothing much has been done in the past few years." I mean. How can you define few without saying maybe in the past five, ten years ago? 
these people were in power for that period of time he's criticizing. And do you know how much money they told us that they pumped in the infrastructure, road infrastructure? Fashola was the minister of works. The man just moved from House of Rep and get upgraded to the Senate. So he's part and parcel of the legislating and the governance that gave us a bad road that they want to take our money to buy in order to drive on it. Because according to him, if he goes to his constituents, which is in Kogi State, from Abuja to Kogi State, two to three times, a 160 million naira land cruiser will spoil. But let me even ask a question. Why is it that land cruiser of 160 million naira is for him as a senator? Remember that for every state, there are two people, two, two representatives, a senator and members of House of Rep. Is it not true? So the members of House of Rep that he shares with, he shared the same constituency with. Why is it that that person can afford to drive Prado? Because for the House of Rep, Prado is what they're trying to get for them, which is 140 million. For them in the Senate, which is 160, if not for status. It's for status. We are bigger than you people. We are your senior broads. But the question we need to ask ourselves as we talk now, the Nigerian student that will travel from Kogi State, his village, to Ahmad Bello University in Zaria, or to Otman Danfodio University in Sokoto, or to uh, Abuba Katafa Belewa University in, in Bauchi, or to Uniben in Benin, or Uniport in Port Harcourt, how many years old vehicle will he be in? These people are going to be in bus that may not have a good exhaust, that may not have good tires. This vehicle may have been on the road for the past 20 years. Nigerians, I mean, is this not our country we are talking about? If you randomly go to YouTube now and say, show me the traffic on the street of Nigeria, the vehicles you see there, some of them, the last time I was in Nigeria, I couldn't believe it. I could still see a car like Mercedes 180. Mercedes 180 is what the former governor of Anambra State's wife was driving when I was in JS1. Mercedes 180 is probably older than you. It's still on the road of Nigeria. Flat boot 200 is still on the road of Nigeria. 504, the one that was produced in Pujo before Shagari left power in 1983. Is still on the road of Nigeria, driving from Kaduna to Kene to, to Wari to Sapele, going through all the bad roads. And the senator is saying, after we have you after we have plundered Nigeria, which brought about a bad road, we must take the money of Nigerians to buy a, a vehicle that can transport there. This man got a brand new vehicle four years ago as a member of House of Rep. I don't know how many years he has been in the National Assembly. If he been if he has been there for the past 12 years, he has been parking four he has parked four three vehicles and this one will make it the fourth one going for the 16th year. And he, they still want another one. They still want another one. We were told of how a, an American president sold an asset because the, the, the country were just coming out of recession. And we that are going into recession, we are buying more luxury, just waste. Those who are coming out are selling to show themselves up. We that are going in, we are buying to make ourselves. Now, let's put it this way. Where do we run to? You can see the executive, they are plundering. And you can see, if you listen to this man going further, you see him say, why are you people talking about this thing? The ministers have like 4-4. Four, four. The, 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 the governors have. Why are you condemning the members of the National Assembly? 
So it is a matter of the other arm of government got their own. He even mentioned the judges. He said the judges have their own. Why should we not? That is their concern. Their concern is, what is he driving? Why shouldn't I drive it? We are not in their equation. Did you notice that in all these things, we are not in the picture. We are not in their equation at all. Do I blame them? The judiciary themselves is as warped as anything. Let's listen to Chido Dinkalo's summary of our current judiciary, possibly. So you see, we're uh, talking. No, please. Uh, um, so just listen to because it appears they are like looking for Mr. Peter Obi. I wanted to touch on that because uh, some APC members have come out to like say Atiku and Peter Obi should just come and you know help the government of the day. And we've also heard some Nigerians saying it that Peter Obi and the uh, Atiku should just come and share their ideas because. From the look of things, these people, they don't have clue. They don't have any idea, you know, to bring to the table. The president was speaking, was he yesterday? He said that the ministers that he has appointed, that if they don't perform, he's going to fire them. He's going to like sack them. So it, it appears they've just distributed the jobs to them. But don't forget that they made so much mistakes. Why picking these people? Some of them were just compensated for the roles they played during the election. And you know, when you begin to appoint people on the basis of they helped you to come into power, you know, you end up not picking people that will perform. There's no two ways about that. So he's already like trying to cry out saying, if you don't perform, I'm going to sack. It's not about threat. It's about if the people you gave those positions, they know what the country needs at this moment is that's just it but you know so many people are saying so we should bring his ideas they know he's the man of ideas let me just play this short video they will look at that of shame before we go to the okay. carlos soon your cost is too high because all this is that we have cost problem your cost is too high because all this is I'm telling you is cost, oh, we have fuel dump. As government, we have fuel dump where we take fuel. Everybody goes there to steal the fuel. We have another fuel dump. I said, no, we're not filling station now. If we want to buy fuel, we'll go to the filling station. In one month, from 15 million naira we used to do for fuel, just because we changed it and said, listen, when I changed it, it came down to about 5 million naira. And I asked, why is it still 5 million a month or so? I was about two weeks. I said, oh, because we have a convoy of about 18 vehicles. So one morning I lined up the vehicles. I want to know who stays in each vehicle. <laughs> and I can tell you, I can tell you, 12 were empty. Nobody needs them. So why are they running around? So, we said no more. Five vehicles and no buying of fuel unless I'm inside the car. <laughs> so we know what we're paying. What am I trying to say? These things are happening all over the world. If you do it, how do you cut corruption? For example, let me give you another one. We insisted that anybody who supplies goods or executes a contract must be paid within 120 days. If you don't pay, you come to me. So the person who is doing it knows that he's not going to give anybody money to push his file. And he has access to me. Ask any you know what? You know what? They are, yeah. they, they are looking for him, but they don't even need to look for him. They should pick like this step and just do exactly what he said here. If they can. Yes, in this, most of his species. Yeah. If they can. He makes bare his ideas. Yeah. yeah. If they can practice for one year what he has said, our currency will firm up. To start with, even if we don't start with production, curtail consumption. Leakages. Consumption. Now, because if you curtail consumption, you will now see excess, you will now see the cash flow that you can inject to trigger production. And yes, when stop. the production peaks, the system will start running. That's true.
I wanted to say that the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs has been summoned. We all know him, I uh, know her, the medical doctor, Mrs. Edu from Cross River State. You know, they, they, I think the Senate has summoned her. They want to know how they are distributing this money, you know, to alleviate the sufferings of Nigeria. We all saw what happened during the time of Buhari. You know, this money were just being shared. You see them, they will just gather a group, a group of northerners and be giving them money like this, you know, in their hand. At the end of the day, it was just discovered that they just wasted the little resources that we, we had they, during that time. Oh, sorry, you made a mistake. They did not waste it. That little video you see when they are sharing is a camouflage. It is in the pocket of the same person. This minister they have summoned it's just for them to be occupying. You know why? Because that one now own settlements. That is it. The minister will look them in the face and say, you, they here, they do your own, and they disturb you. That is the minister's own settlement. Mm -hmm. Because Minister for Humanitarian Affairs does not construct road like the Ministry of Works that can inflate contracts. Shebit is ministerial affair. Is at her discretion. Is there any framework? Is there any modeling? They just dumped money mm. in and say, go make Nigeria, go make your life better. Mm. So she's going to tell you that they bought Gary, that they sh shared to, to wives so that they can do it for their husband. And a bag of Gary that they will buy for 5,000. The invoice will come for 50,000. And now, if the invoice comes for 50,000 and they, they now multiply it by 1,000, that's 500 million that has gone. Instead of 5 million or thereabouts. So that is her own settlement. That's her own settlement. And then the Senate had to do it, gra, 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 and finish. You know, there are a lot of things happening in Nigeria. I haven't told you that so far, APC card carrying members were, were sharply and nominated by the president, sent to the Senate, and they have approved them as INEX resident electoral commissioners. Hmm. So they're already planning on how to rig re re election, uh, another election. 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 Yeah. That is just what they are doing already, planning ahead they, of the election. So, so they know they have they have imposed themselves on us, just like what is happening in Imo State. Hope Uzodima is doing anything, crush anybody that is going to be on his way to return himself. INEC is going to be there to support it. Okay, and then the judiciary has already been bought over as we heard and as they are practicing. So Nigeria is just, it is them and then us. So mm. what are they interrogating? Are they going to tell the woman, are they, are they going to tell the woman it's a lie, this invoice you presented, uh, is it the Senate that will be the, the procurement department for, for her ministry? She will tell them off. You know, when they have power over her before she was appointed, the moment they clear her and the president swears her in, she is not answerable to them. In fact, she can decide not to appear. Remember, first, Uskayamu abandoned them. It is only when they now appointed her that they now reminded him, they now reminded him that, oh, in the last National Assembly, you didn't come to see us. She can, this current woman you're talking, can walk out on them and they can't do anything. Hmm. So it's her own settlement. No, it's really looking bad, honestly. And, uh, you know, the leakages that we have, this government did not even talk about how to stop those leakages. These wow. were some of the things that Peter Obi was hammering on. He said he's going to ensure he blocks all these leakages. And if the people who are in charge are not stealing, the people around them are not stealing, you reduce corruption to 70%. You bring it down, as in you remove 70% of the rate at which uh, corruption is being uh, practiced in Nigeria. But these governments, they don't even care. All they want is loan. 
loan, loan. They just keep borrowing loan. And then servicing the loan is another headache. Now that Naira is depreciating every day, servicing this loan is costing us more money because we have to service in dollars, not even in Naira, not in our currency. So you can imagine what people are going to. Let me quickly play this uh, video of Shinwu, then we continue with other ones that we have. Not have any business with is affecting. A currency that doesn't belong to us that we should not have any business with is affecting the lives of those there's some nigerians that have not seen dollar before there's some nigerians that have not held dollars before but yet the effect of dollar is affecting their livelihood and i'm one i mean i'm not an economist i, I know little uh, about economics but then um how is this so bad uh, I know it was Peter B that was uh, mouthing so much of uh, uh, we need to produce and uh, from uh, consumption to production in, in the campaign. He, he said so much about that. Um, what exactly do you think is making us rely so much on uh, dollar? Yeah, dollar would have been nothing to us if we don't import as, as much. So it's because we rely on foreign so let's break it down for Nigerians to understand. How bad is our importation? So for anyone who is watching or listening, uh, it means that virtually everything that we wear, we use, we drink, we eat, we have to bring it to Nigeria. So the point that abroad. some people impregnate their wife, they export and import their children to Nigeria. Is that bad? Now, we saw, I'm now hearing now that the Chinese are now doing their own kind of adire and is is now cheaper than the adire being made in abel in abel yeah now the if you saw a native the native is only sown here in nigeria the material it's is important. imported into nigeria yes I, is give, that bad? I, I have a popular to example point that toothpick, toothpick that is made from the wood made from the wood that i can Aye. actually file a toothpick in my backyard is imported into nigeria it is imported. sometimes salt is imported into nigeria sugar is 100 percent important to nigeria all the sugar we consume don't believe me go to national sugar development council website now okay mm. oh my god nigerians yes okay you have heard it for yourself see yeah hmm. these old people who are supposed to be resting dog is just that the people we have in these positions they don't have ideas and they don't want younger people to get in. You can imagine how this current president so fought during the election, even during the primaries within his own party to make sure he emerges as the presidential candidate and look at the kind of way he, he was able to get into this position with the judiciary helping him. Now, look at Nigeria is crumbling. Nigeria is really going bankrupt. Nothing is being produced. Ex the exporting things is very difficult in Nigeria. Everything is being imported. The Chinese is even like, you know, using Nigeria now as a toilet tissue because the, any kind of business they want to do, they can easily do it. They can go to their country, produce it with low quality materials and bring in even palm oil that we should be exporting. It's being imported into Nigeria. Even Gary, that one might even say it originated from Nigeria. I might be wrong, but we know this is our common food, our daily food. It's being imported to Nigeria. And these are people who are just talking about five billion for yachts, five bi seven billion for cars, this one for renovation. Oh my God. Just the spending problem is what Nigeria is facing. Okay. Let's look at it this way. Before, let's break it down. If I am Let's be frank. 57 billion naira is what the National Assembly will use to import foreign goods, cars alone. I bet you none of them will sit on a chair in their homes that is made in Nigeria. I mean, I wish we had finished playing that Senate man. If you see what that man used his mouth to say, when Shegun asked him, why not buy a Nigerian made car? And he's like, we are buying Toyota because of the durability. The durability, and, yeah. Name that when the Nigerian product, uh, you know, for safety. 
So they will go and pump 57 billion to Japanese economy at the expense of Naira. Now the executive, the executive, this executive here is just the presidency, sorry, not executive, the presidency. The presidency is spending about 13 billion for their own, the wife's own, the president's own, and what have you. For by the time you sum it, it's about 70 billion naira just for luxury cars only. That is what they will use to buy foreign exchange. The weight of 70 billion naira is coming on Nigeria. That is for the presidency and the legislature. Now, imagine the 36 state governors. Imagine the 40, is it 40 or 48 ministers, which you will hear, a minister will have like three in his entourage. Mm -hmm. By the time you finish, we are almost going to, to almost a trillion naira that will be begging for foreign exchange for cars only. They will furnish their homes, their beds, their refrigerator, refrigerators, their kitchen wares. Everything will be imported. Why I'm saying it is, before we begin to blame sugar being imported, people need sugar. Low sugar in the head is not the best thing. Meanwhile, we know we have a sugar farm in the north. But if you are a manufacturer, how can you think of manufacturing sugar, processing sugar in Nigeria when there is no power? If the cost of processing sugar in Nigeria is higher than importation, would you not go to import? That's number one. Number two, growing up, I used to frequent Northern Nigeria, Kaduna, Kano. There is this place in Kaduna State known as um, text, I think Textile Road. It is one road that they have about more than 10 textile companies, the Supertex, the KTL, the UPTX, you know, United Nigeria Textile Company, um, Supertex. They are just there. Then they have the Kaduna Textile Limited. They are just Ariwa Textile Limited. They are just there. All those mills, textile mills, they have gone under. Remember that when those textile companies were working, people who are farming cotton will now have a place to sell. And then those people who are farming cotton will have people to employ. Imagine the chains that will be directly and indirectly employed. Employment will be soaked in. Now, the question is, when there is no textile mill in Nigeria, you say that people should not go and do their duree in China where it's cheaper. Think about that. Just think mm. about that. And now, no. the people who should be teaching us are importing the Muslim... Have you seen the one that is contesting for governorship in, 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 Beno, in, in Kogi State? What is his name? Dino. Have you seen him during the campaign when he was showing uh, Dele Momodu his wristwatches? He has a complete, you would think that that is a wristwatch shop just for him alone. Have you seen the stock of his cars and his garage? A senator then, what he made just being in the, in the House of Rep and in the Senate. Both him and the one coming out as APC governorship candidate in Kogi State. I'm sorry to say this. In Kogi State, either APC or PDP, anyone that emerges is one chance. Take it from me. It's a one chance boss that APC, that Kogi State is about to get. After the, the one that kidnapped them is about to is about to release them, having collected the ransom for eight years. He will release them on the road and one chance boss will pick them. 
He says shame. Yeah, Doc, thank you very much. You talking about the states. Yesterday we talked about yeah, Anambra State. We showed you guys uh, some of the roots in Anambra State, having a professor as the governor who were thinking that by now Anambra State would have transformed. We've seen what Mr. Oti is doing in Abia State. You know, immediately this man got into office. I said immediately, as in he didn't waste any time. He started even before his inauguration. He was already meeting, you know, some people like we saw Julius Vega and other companies that he was discussing with. And immediately he assumed office. He started working. When you go to Abia State, you feel the presence of government. You know that there is really somebody in charge. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys this video. It's coming from Zamfara State. Just for you to know this. The ex-governor, the current governor, governor of Zamfara that, that existed, he's now, I think, what's that position? I think he has a ministerial position. I think Minister for Defense or something. Minister for Defense, yes. Mm -hmm. Good. That is where they placed him now, just to compensate him for his own role. This is somebody that brought the state down, that crumbled Zamfara State. Let me just allow you to listen to what this man has got to say, just for you to know the kind of people the in charge of Nigeria. For budget and planning. Okay, nice to meet you, Honorable Commissioner. So tell us, how have you met things in Zamfara State? How is Zamfara State? You see, we met Zamfara State in insecurity crisis. When we talk about economic output, Zamfara State is 32 over 37. When we talk about importation, Zamfara State is 32 over 37. When we talk about business competition and industrialization, Zamfara State is 35 over 37. When we talk about healthcare, Zamfara State is 26 over 37. When we talk about education, Zamfara State is 30. When we talk about ICT, Zamfara State is 34. So when you look at all these numbers, this is based on the statistics that was done by ADSR, the scorecards of the Nigerian states. And overall, averagely, the high mark was 45. Zamfara State, we was under 40. So Zamfara State was 36, 30, uh, 36 over 37. Overall in Nigeria, that means we are last. We are taking the Z. Zamfara State this year, I know. Somebody it's said it's the existing servicing of over 30 billion year. We have paid more than 20 billion from January to date. As it stands today in Zamfara State, they do not have two vehicles that can take you from Zamfara to Abuja efficiently and effectively in time. A government that removes from public account taxpayer money to put into a construction and nothing is built there. There is nothing, nothing to show in healthcare. Even those primary health healthcare, when you go around now, you cannot even take animals into those structures. You have built a house, primary healthcare hospital with World Bank uh, uh, monies and then substandard work. And at the end of the day, there is no equipment, there is no manpower, there is no planning, there is no policy. We are still having emergencies in Mafara local government. In hmm. Oh, yes. How was the man rewarded for all these? They rewarded. He was him. given a ministerial position. He's defense. now the minister of, of defense. defense. Such a sensitive position. Nigerians, Again. when we talk, they will say you people are tribalistic people. For once, be patriotic if we really want to be, have a good Nigeria. If we really want to see a good Nigeria, we want to see a Nigeria that everybody will appreciate. Let's be patriotic. Let's call a spade a spade. This government, since APC took over government in Nigeria, hmm, I tell you, these people, they are never straightforward. You can see it. This man is being celebrated now. Mr. Bauer that was investigating him, Bauer of the EFCC, the ex-chairman of EFCC, that was investigating this governor of Zamfara State. The, DSS, the DSS took him in and 
the ex-governor was now made a minister for defense. That is, I don't know how to say it, Doc. Please, you help us to explain all this. What can I explain? The guy, the young man just summarized it. These people are heartless. Mm. They don't care. Can you imagine? They are buying massage chair for 50 million naira each. It's not when even, their kids are not going to school, them that even register for, for their children, yes. they never bothered about their wife for three good years. You can imagine the girl children, especially the girl children that are being neglected in the north for three good years. Those of them that really want to be educated, because you still find some handful of them who are really willing, having that zeal to go to school and be educated, at least to better the, the lives of their family members. Now they've been abandoned. At the end of the day, they've been married at, you know, at ages that you, you not even believe. So you can imagine why all this banditry of a thing is not even coming to an end soon. Yeah, because, because people... It's another cycle of bandits that they are grooming. That's it. And the man is made minister of defense. Mm -hmm. And he's made minister of defense, being mm -hmm. rewarded. These are the tomorrow night. In Imo State, you see all of them. They will troop there and go and tell Imo people vote for APC. Please, this is also a signal to those of us watching. Please, these elections that are coming up, just put in your little effort. Talk to your people back home. Tell them who to vote for, especially like in Imo State, where the Labour Party has. Uh, a governorship candidate. He was in Abia this other day, and he's working in a close relationship with the governor of Abia State, who is Mr. Oti. Uh, luckily, Mr. Oti's wife is from Imo State. She's from um, BC. So they are really working in hand. But you know that we have one strong, well, I call him a giant in Imo State, you know, in the person of the current gov governor. He's ready to do anything to smuggle himself again into that position. But we really have to play our role. We can't just allow this. If we allow them, then they won. If we want a good Nigeria, we have to keep fighting. It's, it's going to be a long fight. Mr. Peter Obi said this transformation, this change that we want, it won't just come that easy. There will be a lot of struggle involved. So let's just involve ourselves and see what we can do. For myself, I believe that a new Nigeria is possible. So back to you, please. Okay, I think we need to draw it um, here. We've already hit one hour. Uh, we continue tomorrow with other uh, national issues of importance. If there is anything that um, come in as a breaking news, we'll be the first to let you know. But unfortunately, they are making all, they are making a lot of moves to see these people. Are, they they're even so daring. They are making moves to see if they can whoop it will be. But don't they know that that man is not that type? He's too clean to mingle himself with this set of people. Peter Obi will not be able, you know, to even... He might really want to help, you know, to alleviate the, the suffering of the masses. But you can imagine... His own ideology is far different from the ideology of these people. So th th I don't really see that compatibility between his and theirs i don't really see it and that will really be the problem you know if really he wants to come and give them some ideas on how to you know do some of the things that but I, like you said his videos are out there he always make bare his his plans for nigeria so if they can really watch some of his videos and buy in some of his ideas please i'll be as talked about production production we have agriculture the lands are there let them start doing some things. You can't just say, oh, I don't know. The, the first one year is almost gone and nothing is happening. Rather, the situation is getting worse. Something so, is so let's just take some of the comments that we have here before we call it a day. Yeah. We have OC. OC here. No, there's nothing. It's just I agree with you. There's a lot of things we've said. Okay. I just take back their country or remain in the same mess. Well, it's um, I don't see any change in Nigeria leadership unless the Babylonian system of government is put to an end in Nigeria. 
I'm afraid INEC is a criminal political party. I think tomorrow we're going to be highlighting on the coup. They have started planning for 2027 and the and the other elections coming because they are serious. They are serious. They are not hiding it. And for me, I'm thinking that uh, we care that is being placed in Abuja as the minister for the FCT. They are being strategic, you know. They are being strategic. They know that the constitution says that they must win Abuja. It's clear, no matter what the judges would. So them placing him there is like, you know, a strategy they are trying to use for the upcoming but, election. Aside from that, the it, uh, they have made him, he's the only minister that they now told to control his own fund. Other funds, other ministers have their money at the you know, central, what do they call it? Account, yeah. Account. So what they have done is to give him a blank check, spend as you want, spend how, when, and where you want to spend. They Because they know how he helped them to become who they are today. First of all, let's leave those people. Let's just, let's just maybe hope tomorrow, if we have time tomorrow, we'll touch on the, on the coup they're planning from INEC and preparatory for elections and other things. Okay, look at our judiciary. We couldn't even tell you what we brought from the judiciary today. But you see how they keep quiet on this same emo state's judgment we're talking. The judiciary just keep quiet. It's deliberate. They want the chaos to continue in emo states. They don't care. They don't care because they've been bought over. All right, Nigerians and Farah State are allowed to keep all the profit from the sale of gold. It's quite unfortunate. To say. Yeah, I think that's also an important point. Sorry I took away that uh, comment because Zamfara has uh, this deposit of gold in it. I don't know why this, this state is really suffering like this upon the natural resources. Anyway, it's across Nigeria, but I don't think they are really managing it well. I don't know why the federal government has not taken over that. Statement, that. I think that statement is not correct when the statement said Zamfara State. If Zamfara okay, State, it should say Zamfara State are allowed. No, if they are allowed, it should reflect on their balance sheets. It is the politicians in Zamfara that are mining it and putting it in their pockets. Period. Hmm. And they use this bandit to disguise so that it looks like there is insecurity up there. So when he bought cars and gave to bandits, according to the guy we're listening. It's just to tell them, hey, guys, you guys are doing a good job. Continue to do what you're doing so that we can have a free day. It's, that's it. Hmm. OK, Nigerians, we need to call it off now. See you tomorrow. Yeah, have thank a good you. night. It's been, it's been good this night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for your presence and your contribution. So I think this person is saying something relevant. It's talking about cotton exports, which Dr. Tell equally mentioned. Because if we have all this in place, that's why Mr. Peter will be always talk about agriculture, especially in northern Nigeria, where we have uncultivated land. And we have you know, this landmass over there that is not even being utilized. They are not building houses. Rather, we have forests that is housing. Uh, the bandits, those of them that are even out, not Nigerian, some of them are from Niger, they will just come in and find their cover there and just be, you know, doing their mayhem on the people. So you can imagine if this government should equally look at this cotton export of a thing and try to empower the, the farmers to go into all this kind of production. I think Nigeria will also, Nigerians will get some relief from the kind of poverty people are experiencing. You need to see the level of malnutrition that is going on in northern nigeria you you see there was a day arise television made a, a very short documentary on that they uploaded that video i watched it the next moment i went to search for that video it was removed possibly they told them to remove it because it's going to like showcase nigeria in a very bad light so they asked them to remove, because I watched, not that somebody saw it and told me, I watched it live when it was uploaded. The next moment I went to search for that video, I couldn't find it. You may not know what people are going through, especially in the North. They will still bring that money and go and give them five, five thousand, ten, ten thousand 10,000 in their hand. Build good school, no. 
build good hospitals for these people no empower them let them go to the farm ensure that this insecurity is is being brought to a stop so that people can go back to their they just keep giving them you know peanuts giving them uh cash in their hand what we ten thousand naira do for a family and we know that some of these families in the north they always have a, lots of children maybe you you come into a family you have like 10 persons there and you give them 10 000 20 000 what would that serve them so what we just need is good governance in nigeria i think that is just what the nigerian people are asking but from the look of things these governments they don't even know how to start arresting the current situation on ground things are not looking good i tell you and naira is depreciating unemployment rate is increasing by the day inflation is rising cost of things in the market you know are soaring every day so I, I i think we are really in a mess at this moment and this government they should really know what they they, they, they can do to save nigerians of this current situation so guys i'm going to be ending this show at this point i really want to appreciate you all for being a part of today's live show i always ask you for your support to like the video so that youtube can recommend it to more people and also subscribe to our channel turn on the notification bell for future updates so that if you have any content you get notified so with this i'll draw the curtain for tonight i really want to say thank you and god bless you for being a part of today's live show Good night and bye.